Hey everybody. And just wait a few minutes. I'm Brittany. And I'm gonna be doing a video for you live today. Hi, hi Katie. Hi Barbara. Hi everybody. Hey Heidi. How you guys doing? Hi Elaine. Oh, <laughs> I can hear my dog. She's like, who's mom talking to? She's coming in here. She might start squeaking her donut toy in a little bit. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Chavers. Um, I'm going to be doing a video for you today, live today. We're going to be making a necklace and hopefully a pair of earrings if we have enough time. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes. Hi, Trudy. Oh, my mom's here. Hi, mom. Hi, how's everybody doing? Where are you guys all watching from? Hi, Maria. Hi, Angela. Thank you. Yep, we've got some JJBs on the necklace here. Hi, Deborah. So um, if you don't know me, I am Brittany Chavers. I have a YouTube channel called uh, Turquoise Street, and I've been making jewelry almost my entire life. Um, in my bio, I said, you know, it started when I was a little kid and my grandma gave me some, some beads. So um, I've made jewelry professionally and now I just do it for fun. And then I have a bead channel on YouTube where I make jewelry and hoard beads and hey, Julie. Um, yeah, we have a ton of fun. I have a bead group and we're doing an awesome color challenge. But today I want to make an awesome necklace with you guys using some Dakota stones, um, one of the D new Dakota stone strands. So we're just gonna wait a couple minutes, seeing some of my friends. Oh, we've got Florida, Chicago, where else? Iowa, Cincinnati, hi Michelle. Ooh, Tucson, yeah, I'm in Phoenix. It's cold here too, it's windy. Hi Angela, hi Sarah. Yeah, Goldie's like, Mom, what are you doing? No, you can't be on camera, honey. <laughs> so if you start hearing a squeak toy, it's my dog. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around. Please excuse the mess that you're about to see on my desk, by the way. Hi, Carol. California, San Antonio, Texas. Okay, we've got somebody, people from all over today. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to switch the camera around. All right, so I kind of tested <laughs> in my group earlier today, hoping that we could get it right. But we'll see. If it's too dark, let me know, and we can tr try and fix it. Because I can really only see, like, the top half here. Maybe i come back out a little bit. Ooh, Cleveland is 50 and warm today. That's a first. Hi, Michelle. El Paso, Texas. Okay. Okay. All right. So please excuse my camera. It's on it, the the tripod's on its last legs. So, but we're going to we're going to power through today. So, I have these amazing bead strands from Jesse James Beads and Dakota Stones. And the name of this strand is the Galaxy Strand. And I just love it and you can see I'm going to try and get it a little bit closer. There are some really cool colors here going on in this strand, and it definitely looks like galactic. So the I've named the necklace I'm going to make today the Galactic Butterfly Necklace. And um, this strand has some blue gold stone in 10 millimeter. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's really sparkly, really sparkly. And then we've got rainbow tiger eye. And guys, this tiger eye is so awesome. So you're going to see some glare from my ring lights. I'm sorry about that. But these tiger eyes, they've got blue and purple in them. Hi, Lynn. Um, and it's just gorgeous. And then they're, so these are about six inches long. And then there's some metal. We're going to do a uh, couple different color metals. There's some crystals. And then there's also some purple crazy lace agate and star cut beads on here. So yeah, this was one of my favorites. Uh, the, the new um, 
strands that came from Jesse James Beads and Dakota Stones are gorgeous, but these were definitely my favorite, so I had to make something with it. So we're gonna be making a necklace using these. We're gonna actually be using quite a bit of different things, and um, I'm sure Jesse James Beads will be putting in um, the chat what I'm using. Here is the butterfly, and I just feel like this butterfly was made to go with this necklace or this bead strand. So this is um, called the Stone Pendant and Amethyst Butterfly. So I think that's really pr pretty. And I'm sorry that the, the lighting kind of turned yellow on us when I brought that in, but I still think it's really, really pretty. And then, um, so I have a lot that's gonna be going on. And I also have um, these Czech eight millimeter matte amethyst pearls so since these strands are called shorties um, I want to be able to stretch our strands out a little bit so we're gonna mix in some of this check glass we've got people in Florida oh hi Laura my besties watching um, I'm gonna be using and bear with me guys some some elements from this mini mix which is avocado on everything I've already taken out those elements that I'm gonna be using um, I'm gonna be using some Chain Reaction. This one is Olivine Fancy Gold. I love those. If we get to the earrings, I'll be using this Big Girl Textured Chain, which is really fun. Hopefully we can get to the earrings. Um, I'll be using some Beetle On Artistic Wire in Brass 20 Gauge. I'll be using Beadalon 19 strand bead stringing wire. Um, some two, number two crimp beads from Beadalon, some earring findings, and then little things here and there. Oh, and a Tierra cast braided three hole bar link. So yeah, this, this is gonna be a really, really fun necklace. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna get these out of the way put the strands over to the top. We're gonna to make a pendant because this is a bead. I don't know if you guys noticed that. It's not a pendant yet. We're gonna make this guy into a pendant using this artistic wire. Okay, I'm just gonna cut. Usually I cut too much because I'm always afraid I don't have enough wire. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut maybe 12 inches. I know I'm not gonna use that much. You could probably get away with eight. probably get away with eight. Hi Amanda. I'm seeing all my friends here. I'm so happy you guys are able to join us. So I'm gonna put my piece of wire in my butterfly and yeah I cut off way too much but that's just like the person in me who's always prepared for the disaster right? <laughs> we always want to have enough so we don't have to redo it. So what we're gonna do is have the a long piece coming out the top and then I'm gonna come up and pull a shorter piece up the back of the bead and I love that this is a bead because then you can use it you can use it several different ways but we're gonna make it a pendant today so we're gonna pull it up the back of the bead and then we're gonna kind of wrap around that that longer wire and you can use um, you can use your your pliers to wrap. And you know what? You know what? I'm gonna before I commit to that, I'm gonna slide a little bead down in there. So I have a a couple different smaller beads that we can test out from the mini mix, the avocado on everything mini mix. And we want to slide a bead down then in there because it wasn't really gonna give us enough traction. So let's see, maybe this little teardrop in there. And sorry if I miss your comment. The teardrop is a little tiny for the 20 gauge wire. So let's try our little, yeah, that guy's perfect. Oh, and he matches perfectly. So we'll kind of just slide that as close to the butterfly as we can. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring my, I'm gonna slide that guy down there, 
I'm gonna bring my wire around. Sorry, I hit the camera. I do that all the time. <laughs> and then we'll just kind of bring that around a couple times, just so it's it's stationary, okay? I'm gonna take my nippers, or my snips, whatever you wanna call them, and I'm gonna cut that off in the back. Just make sure you cut the right piece. So this is where we're, it's not finished. He's moving around a little bit, okay? He's still moving around. But what we're gonna do is take our pliers. And if he's a little too loose in the back, see how this is moving around? That's okay. We can fix that easily. We wanna make sure that he's straight. And then we'll just take our pliers and we'll kind of bend a little bit until we get less movement there we go there we go now our wire is stationary so how are we going to make this into a pendant okay we're going to have this guy we're going to pull this up forward a little bit and at this point if you don't have bail making pliers that's totally fine you can just use your round nose pliers um, I, you know what, I'm not gonna use my bell making pliers because it's easier for me to use round nose pliers. You can decide how large you want your bail to be or how high up you want it to be by choosing how much area you want here. I want a little bit of area. I want this to hang down a little bit. So there's gonna be a gap where I can wrap my wire wrap my butterfly. So I'm gonna bend my wire back and then I'm gonna grab my wire and pull forward. I'm going to reposition. I'm going to bring this wire to the back. Okay, so we have, oh gosh, guys, I'm sorry. So we have a little loop. All right. Now you can use um, nylon jaw pliers to hold your, your loop if you need to, but I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this guy around and he's going to be a messy wrap. Okay, sorry, I do have a camera in the way, so it's a little harder than it normally would be. Wire wrapping and crimping on camera are the two, the hardest things to do. <laughs> so um, you can take your pliers and wrap too, but I'm just gonna do a messy wrap. And uh, it's gonna be very messy because like I said, it's on camera. Okay, so I'm gonna take, sorry, I'm gonna take my pliers, hold that, and keep going. Here we go. And you can decide as if you want it precise or messy. I just want this to be kind of messy because that bling brings out the shine on the wire. Okay, so we're gonna wrap it towards the back and then we're gonna cut that off. And if you need to, you can tuck that in. So I'm gonna move my nippers. Here's our wire, and it's not completely finished yet. I'm just gonna kind of straighten that a little bit. All right, so here's our pendant. And like I said, it's totally your choice. Do you want messy? You can use a different gauge wire. You can do whatever feels good for you. I love this, and it makes me so happy. So, and then we, we tightened it by doing that. I'm gonna set this guy aside for a second. Okay, we're just gonna put him up there. And then the rest of the necklace is gonna be pretty straightforward. However, we're gonna, um, it's gonna be an over the head necklace, okay? So I believe our Jesse James um, beads chain reaction is 18 inches, I'm almost positive. Yeah, it does help if you hold it closer to the wrap, but it, with a 
camera in the way it's a little hard. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and it's got a split ring. I'm just gonna cut the split ring off because I don't need that. Okay. I usually, when I'm stranding beads onto beading wire, I usually leave it on the spool until I'm finished with one side because it, it helps uh, use less wire. Um, this, for these guys, I'm gonna um, crimp right onto our chain today once we get to that point, but I am gonna cut off so it's even this guy right here. All right, so we have one link that we're not gonna be using today. And I'm just gonna set our chain to the side. Okay. Let me know if you guys, if you're having a hard time seeing things, you can try and move things around a little bit. So we're gonna cut open our strands. And I'm gonna save at the top, I have two strands. I'm gonna save at the top one tiger eye and one crystal for our earrings. I'm going to put those aside. So I'm going to open and then put one crystal and one tiger eye aside from both strands. Okay. And then we to stretch this to make it a longer necklace, I'm gonna use some other beads from the Design Elements package. These are matte amethyst pearls. I love check glass. Check glass is one of my current obsessions. You get a lot in here. These are eight millimeter and they match perfectly. That purple is just absolutely perfect. And it the matte, I feel like, plays off of the really sparkly beads in the galaxy strand. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to take that off of its strand. So I also pulled some beads and bead caps out of the mini mix. We have, um, um, this is why I said it's gonna be dual tone because the metal that comes on this strand is antique brass. And I really, really like how it looks and plays with these beads, but I also wanted gold in here because our, our, our brass, because our pendant has brass wire. So I took the um, bead caps out of that mix. I got some crystals out of there, and then I'm not really certain if we're gonna use those brown crystals, but I got them out just in case. So let's come up with a pattern for our first side of the necklace. And I'm leaving my um, beading wire on the spool while I'm doing this. And like I said, it's 19 strand um, gold colored, or I think it's gold color. Yeah, gold color uh, beetle on beading wire. Okay, so I wanna decide what's gonna be near our focal and let me think about this i'm going to start at the top so i'm going to start where we'll eventually hook it onto our chain and i don't want to start with the star cut bead so i'm going to grab um, i'm going to grab two of these little teardrops i'm going to put one on each side and then i'm going to put a teardrop down here so we can get it towards our pendant. Okay, so we'll start with the teardrop at the top and then I'm gonna go through and I will um, use basically the same pattern that Jesse James Beach chose because it's a really good pattern, but I'm also gonna put in some of these purple pearls to make sure that we can get um, some more length out of the necklace. Now, I also pulled out some beads from a mix that I got from them. It's a metal bead mix. It's called Golden Gate. And I pulled these guys out and I really love the spirals on them. They reminded me of galaxies. 
So I want to see if we can mix these in. I thought those were really fun. I will say, Jesse James Beads has been on point with the metal <laughs> in this mix and in this mix as well. So, okay, before I get a little too, a little further, I'm going to kind of put that to the side. We're going to decide our pattern and then we'll start stringing. Sorry if I'm, I haven't been actually watching your comments. I've been trying, but it's been a little hard. <laughs> so I'll put that guy there. And then we have some crystals in there. All right, I think we're good. I'm not doing every other bead, I just want to elongate the strand a little bit more. I don't want the purple glass pearls to become the focal. Okay, and then let's see, where do we want to put a spiral? Actually, I think these spirals are a little large, but these are a little bit smaller. Ooh, I like the spiral in between the uh, tiger eye and the star cut bead. I'm gonna do that there and there. I'm gonna do that there and there. And I'm not going to do it down here. I think I'm gonna put these two guys aside because they're a little bit too big for what I'm looking for. And Let's see, I want to get some gold in here, not just the antique brass. Since we didn't put a spiral bead down here, what I'm gonna do is put um, a bead cap on this tiger eye down here to get some gold there. And then I'll put these guys on our purple pearls up here to get some gold up there. So there we go, we're ready to go. So we have already, if you can see, our teardrop and our star cut bead. And then we're gonna put on a bead cap Our purple check bead bead cap and then we're just gonna go down the line um, I don't know if you guys know this but they um, Jesse James beads and Dak Dakota stones came out with a lot of these shorties recently and they're so beautiful I'll be also doing um, another video that I'll be uploading to my channel on YouTube in, later this week. So what are you guys doing at home today? Oh, my poor dog is dreaming in the background. I can hear her yelping. <laughs> okay, so here's what we have so far. Relaxing. Well, that's nice. I was relaxing until about two hours before the live started. I was like, oh, okay, I should probably get things together here. <laughs> All right, so I'm just checking to see. Okay, I put the pearl on after this bead cap, so I wanna make sure I do that again. Maps and crafts, that's like the best 
Sunday ever. <laughs> Getting ready for The Walking Dead. Is that show? I did not know that that show was still on. That is brand new information. Oh, sorry guys, I'm off this camera. Clean up your bead room. I need to finish that. Oh, sorting beads. Yeah, I feel like that's all I do these days. <laughs> Okay, put this guy on here. Yeah, I bought some more bead boxes this weekend too. Doesn't it always feel so great when you you clean your craft room? Then I never want to do anything in it after it's clean. Oh, that's the problem. So maybe we shouldn't clean. Remodeling, oh, that's that's fun, but also scary sometimes. Yeah, they really are some beautiful beads. I love these tiger eyes. I think those are my favorite on this strand, although this entire strand is so yummy. Okay, so we have the first strand on. Now, it's gonna get, it's not gonna get tricky, but I'm gonna do, I'm not just gonna put my pendant on. I'm gonna use this bar here to have it hang. So um, I'm going to uh, uh, first put the left hand side of the bar on, okay? And that's why I had this crystal here I wanted to get a good um, fit in here. <laughs> My mom is the one who asked the wine drinking question. <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> um, and then what we're gonna do is use some beads from the um, mini mix to go uh, down until we want to put on our pendant. So I have some of these little cubes A little cube there. I have a, um, let's see, how do I want to do this? Oh, little teardrop. Another cube. I'll, sh I'll back out, and, well not back out, but I'll show you how this looks in just a moment. Um, a little crystal. I love, these little cubes are metal. I want like a whole package of them. Wine is mandatory for watching. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, then we're going to put another crystal. And here, sorry, I'm off on the, the other side. Here is where I'm going to hang my butterfly. make sure okay good I was a little worried there that loop is not big enough for the bead to go through I was a little worried until just at that second didn't even think about it <laughs> so if it had been too big then I would have chosen a different um, bead okay and then I'm going to do the same pattern going up the other side okay sorry I'm moving the camera, I just want to grab some beads from the other side here. Oh no, I dropped a bead. I think it's one I need. <laughs> Great. Okay. Oh, 
No, I think we'll be okay. All right, and then we need this guy. Another cube. And then we'll go up through there are this is a three hole pendant or a three hole bar but I'm not using the middle hole okay and then there here is where we might have a little bit of an issue we want to make sure we pull enough wire so that it's you know enough to, to go up the other side so this is what it looks like so far and that's how our pendant will hang so pretty so sparkly all right and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up using our same pattern from this side kind of lay that out so I can see the pattern <laughs> in case because I have a tendency to get my, my beads a little jumbled up but we're just gonna go up the side the exact same way Just making sure that the pen of uh, the pattern stays stays the same. Hi, thanks for joining. Glad to see you. All right. Hi, Jenny. Thanks, Heidi. The pendant came from Jesse James Beads too. Everything I'm using is from Jesse James today. Okay, so now we need a pearl. Oh wait, oh yeah, okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's easy to get lost when you're um, trying to complete the same pattern. Okay, now we need a star cut. Oh no! Good thing it didn't go too far. <laughs> I meant to put down a rug underneath me today because I knew I was going to drop a bead, but thankfully it didn't travel too far. So we're at this guy now. Thanks, Laura. Okay, another pearl. Thank you, Holly. All right, so we're almost finished getting our pattern on. Um, I have a few more beads to go. And then we will do the connection to the chain using crimp beads. Hmm. I think I think I misplaced a star cut bead. Do you guys see it? <laughs> oh, nope, here it is. There were two. Sorry. 
Okay, let me move the camera back over. Thanks. Is it Jamie? Thank you. Hi, Jackie. Okay, just want to make sure that we're even. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Kristen. Sounds like somebody started up some kind of motorcycle outside my window. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear that. I actually don't know what it is, but it sounds like a motorcycle. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I think we are finished stringing so far. And then we'll, we're still gonna add length by putting um, the chain on the back. Isn't that so pretty? Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Letitia. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, move these guys aside. And I'm just gonna do, obviously, one side at a time. So I'm gonna grab my chain reaction. And this will be an, like I said, overhead necklace. But if you have a special um, class that you'd like, feel free to do that. This is just easy peasy for me to not put a clasp on. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab um, some beetle on crimp tubes. Uh, this wire tells you that either a one, number one crimp bead will work, Sorry, my camera's moving. Or a number two crimp tube. I have a number two crimp tube here from Beetle On. Just get a couple of those out. Okay, and then you know how I wire wrapped on camera? Crimping on camera is even worse. <laughs> so forgive me if it doesn't work the first time around. Okay, so we'll take our crimp tube, put it on our wire. Oh, that one has a burr on it. I didn't want to use that one. Okay, so we'll put our crimp tube. Oops. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Michelle. And then we'll go ahead through one of these links. I'm not using a wire guard, but you can absolutely do so if you want to. I usually forget that I have wire guards. So that's why I don't use them that often. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that down. Grab your crimpers. Make sure that your crimp, uh, your wires, um, yeah, it for sure does, Tracy. <laughs> um, make sure that um, your wires are not crossed when you go to um, crimp because that's not gonna help you. It's, it's not gonna help you at all. So if you look at your crimping pliers, you want to go to the one that's all the way at the back, okay? And I'm gonna put them, put my tube, lay it in the middle of our back piece, and then we'll go ahead and smush, okay? Trying to get that fold in between the two wires, and then we'll go ahead and turn it 90 degrees and move it to the next jaw in your crimping pliers. Oh goodness, where's my next jaw? There we go. And we'll fold it again. And then I kind of just walk it 
up the pliers until we're at the flat part. Yeah, you're right, Rosanna. Okay, and then I have some crimp covers. You don't have to use crimp covers. They just make it look a little bit more polished. Oh, these guys are stuck together. Sorry, that is like one of my biggest pet peeves of having a um, tripod in front of me instead of on my table. I move it too much. So here's my crimp uh, cover. It's a little big. It's a big one. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that over the crimp tube and just smush. And you kind of gotta work around it because it doesn't smush right away, and you don't want to um, deform it. There we go. And then it just looks like a gold bead. Now, I always leave a little bit of wire and it's not because I think that it makes the necklace more stable. It's in case I mess up later on down the line and I see that I didn't, um, you know, put my pattern on correctly and I have to undo it. It's easier to crack off that crimp than to restring my entire necklace. So I'm gonna move my beads down my wire here. Okay, and I'm gonna slide my wire through just a few of them. And this little teardrop might prove me wrong because he was not being nice earlier and didn't fit the wire through the um, artistic 20 gauge, so he might not let me fit this guy through twice. I'm gonna cut a little tip off of that. Oops. Okay. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, he's not fitting through. So forget everything I just said. I'm just gonna cut it off at my crimp tube, which is totally fine. Just make sure you cut the right wire because if you cut the other one you're gonna have to restring anyway all right so we're gonna move down our beaded necklace oh, I'm going the wrong way guys There we go. And then we'll come around the other side, cut off our wire, and then crimp onto the other side of the chain, and then our necklace will be finished. Hopefully I didn't tangle my wire here. Here we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna move the, neck, the camera over just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna put my crimp tube on, just like we did on the other side. I'm gonna grab my other end of my chain. I wanna make sure that we don't get it tangled.
Thank you, Alice. That's so sweet. I'm telling you, the beads did it. These beads are crazy beautiful. All right. Let's see. I don't think I can get that little crystal. It's just so skinny. Oh, I did it. Yay. <laughs> this one, this side decided to go through the crystal. Okay. So one thing that I say in all of my videos when I'm doing stranding is we want to make sure once we're crimping that final crimp that our necklace is loosey-goosey. We don't want a straight line because then we're going to have a problem in the way it drapes around your neck. However, we don't want big gaps like that. Um, so we're going to walk the beads down as much as we can to the other side of the necklace. So just take out any slack. Okay, but I'm not gonna like make this one long piece while I'm uh, crimping this side because that will just, it just wouldn't look right on your neck. As long as we crimp it and it's tight like this, it'll be fine. Oh, we need some more room over here. Jackie, I haven't tried that. No, not really, but it sounds like a good idea. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pull to make sure that we don't have too much slack in the line. Okay, and I'm just, you know, always double check. It's totally fine. Take an extra second to double check. It's like that old adage, uh, measure twice, cut once, right? <laughs> make sure you have enough slack, but make sure it's not too much. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this side too. Whoopsie. Always do that guy. Now, if you end up crimping and there's too much slack, it's okay. You can add an extra crimp cover and it'll just look like a bead. There's always one time that it just doesn't work completely well, but it's good enough here. There we go. And then I'll put my crimp cover on. We'll cut our um, wire and then our necklace is finished. And we still have 13 minutes to make the pair of earrings, which we're not gonna need that long, I hope. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my crimp cover on. And then I'm going to take my snips. Jackie, I think we've all learned the hard way when it comes to crimping. <laughs> uh, there are some days where the crimp just, the crimp wins and I don't. All right. So let me clear out some of this, some of these extra beads here. Okay. So here is our beautiful long, long, long necklace. What do you think? Do you think I did those beads justice? I think it's so fun. This was really fun to make too and easy. All right, so I'm gonna put this to the side. I have this big girl chain. And there's a lot of it. So if you ordered some of this, you can make a lot of earrings from this. What I'm gonna need is two sections of three links. So there, this has three different size links in it and I need two sections of those three links. So I'm gonna just cut off, because these are soldered closed, they're not like jump rings. I'm gonna cut off one of the smaller links here. And I'm gonna do it again. Oh boy. All right. 
And just so you know, nothing I use today, everything I use today is on their website. I didn't use anything that you would need to get anywhere else. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, we're gonna put it like that. So we have two for our two earrings. Um, we have our tiger eye that we set aside at the beginning. I know I set aside two um, crystals, but oh, there they are. I was like, good night, we might have missed them. <laughs> um, we're gonna put those there. And then I have two pearls that we're gonna put at the top. So I'm gonna grab four head pins. Okay. Have my pliers, my round nose pliers. Thanks, Mary Ann. I'm gonna grab one head pin, put on our tiger eye bee, and our little tiny crystal. And we're just gonna do a simple, simple loop. I'm not wire wrapping these. So I always bend mine first. I've seen people do these so many different ways. I'm just gonna bend mine first. This is how I've been doing it for a million years. Cut off um, a length. I usually use about a half inch, if not more. Okay. And I'm just gonna do a simple loop. And I'm gonna make that loop as big as I can. So there we go. So there's our simple loop. I'm just gonna do repeat for the other side. Cut. So when I started making jewelry, I used to let those head pins fly. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'll let the the um, the vacuum get it. No, I think I killed a, a vacuum or two doing that. So here's our second one with our simple loop. I'm going to do the same thing with the top, but just one bead, not uh, not put a crystal. Although you absolutely could. Uh, are you talking about the dual? pliers, Nancy. I love them. That's my favorite tool. Okay. I have two pairs of them, actually. One with bent nose pliers and one with straight nose pliers. All right, so we have all of our simple loops, our simple loop dangles. The first one I'm gonna take, I'm gonna grab my other pliers here with the straight nose. Yeah, I do really like these, Nancy. I'm gonna open that, twist it open, don't pull. I'm sure most of you already know that. And then I am gonna hang it from this middle guy, okay? So it kind of hangs like that. Of course, you can put a bead cap on that guy if you want, which I probably should have now that I think about it. But um, we're just gonna do the exact same thing on the other one. Hang it from the middle guy. Oops, I don't think I opened this one more enough. close him. Okay. So then before I hang those pearls, 
I'm gonna grab two ear wires and you can use whatever type of ear wires you like. If you like the lever, lever back, post, whatever you want. I'm just gonna use some fish hook ear wires. And I'm gonna open it up. You always wanna twist, you don't pull. And I'm going to hang our uh, medium hook or medium circle so that's what it looks like so far okay really Pam I think they're easier to use I have to oh, I don't have to pull up more than one pair of pliers at a time and then I'm gonna go ahead and hang that guy Close them up. Okay. And then, actually, that guy didn't get closed all the way. I'm going to take my simple loop on this guy, open that up. And <clears throat> I'm going to hang it from my ear wire, not the uh, hammered link. Oh goodness. Here we go. So you have a fun pair of earrings that you can wear with this necklace or you can just wear them with something else. Here we go. What do you think? Do you like those? Yeah, it's called Big Girl Chain. Um, let's see. Chain Gold Textured Big Girl is what it is. I just love those rainbow tiger eye. Okay, so we have our necklace. And four minutes to spare, guys. <laughs> we got there. So we have a really cute pair of earrings and a fun sparkly, sparkly, sparkly <laughs> necklace. Yay. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you guys tuned in today. Yeah, it could swing better, but I liked how it was stationary, kind of in front. But if certainly, if you wanted it on a jump ring, that could definitely be a good idea, too. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, uh, Deanna. You guys are so sweet. Thanks, guys. I'm so excited that you guys had fun on my first live for Jesse James Beads. Stay tuned. Later this week, I'll be putting something on my channel using some of the other strands from Dakota Stones and Jesse James Beads. So glad you guys like this. Yay. All right, everybody. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I hope it's restful. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. Bye-bye.